In this video, we're gonna connect Rhino geometry into Blender using Speckle. Let's get started. Let's start with the requirements to follow this tutorial. First and foremost, you will need a Speckle account. If you don't have one already, get one for free at speckle.xyz. Then you'll need to have the Speckle Manager installed in your device because this is the place where we're gonna install the connectors from. And speaking of connectors, we are going to use Rhino and Blender connectors in this tutorial. In Rhino, we're also gonna use the Grasshopper to generate the geometry. And speaking of Grasshopper, uh, you'll need to have the Human and Elephant plugins installed. They are installed from Food for Rhino. All right, let's continue. Okay, here we are in Rhino and I'm gonna open Grasshopper. By the way, the Grasshopper definition as well as the Blender file used in this video will be available. A link to that is in the description down below. So uh, the Grasshopper definition consists of four parts actually. So in the first part, we are generating this structure out of these six points. So between these three points, I'm creating a curve and then another three points I have, I'm also generating a curve. So between these two set of curves, I generate a number of curves using the twin curve command. And I can control the number of that using this slider. And then one important thing is that I have to convert this B-Rep geometry into a mesh because what I'm trying to do is I want to send the Rhino geometry with its materials. And at the moment, Speckle does not support materials applied to B-Rep surfaces. So that's why we have to convert that into a mesh first if we want to preserve the materials applied. And then uh, this is where we are generating the material. So this node is from human uh, called create and modify materials. And I named my material as pavilion.wood and I applied a color to it. And then we are baking this mesh geometry with this material applied using the bake objects from Elefront. And I applied a bake name to this bake method because when you apply the name, whenever you make a change in your script and re-bake it into Rhino, it's gonna update your geometry and delete the old one. That's what we want to do. Okay, so let's bake it into Rhino. I'm gonna change my view into shaded mode and let's close Grasshopper now. So this is what it looks like inside Grasshopper. If I change it into rendered mode, you can actually see its color applied. Okay, so let's start Speckle now. So with version 2.6, now Rhino connector has this dockable panel. Uh, I can, I'm going to place it right next to my layers and let's send this geometry into speckle now. I'm going to create a new stream and let's name this as Rhino to Blender. I'm going to click on create. Okay, so now we have a new stream created. I'm going to send everything from Rhino to this newly created stream. Okay, let's click on this blue button. Send successfully, let's review it online. So this is what it looks like in Speckleverse. If I select one of them, as you can see, it's a mesh geometry with its materials applied. Let's continue in Blender. Okay, here we are in Blender now. As I said, I'll be using a model that I you know, prepared for this tutorial, uh, in which I only have a single plane and a low poly a human model. So to activate the speckle connector, I'm going to click on N from my keyboard and you should see a speckle tab uh, available here. If you can't see it, just go to edit, click on preferences, go to add-ons and search for speckle. Speckle Blender 2.0 should be enabled. If it's not, just click on it and enable it. All right, so from here, I'm going to select the same stream, Rhino to Blender. And then from the main branch, let's click on receive. And here it is. If I select one of the geometries and go to its material, as you can see, the material name is the same name we defined in Grasshopper, pavilion.wood. And the color is the same color we selected using a color swatch in Grasshopper. 
this is really exciting because this means that speckle preserves the material they applied so you know i think this is a really boring material because rhino is not really capable of generating you know pbr materials so let's switch that with a material setup we created inside blender let's switch to shading mod and from principle bsdf so i'm going to replace this boring material with a material setup i downloaded from online so i'm going to click on Control shift and t from my keyboard and i downloaded a plywood material let me select all of its maps from albedo to displacement to normal and click on principled texture setup and voila so this is definitely much better than the rhino material but in the beginning we said we are creating a connection between rhino and blender let's see whether if it's the case or not so i'm going to switch back to rhino let's reactivate grasshopper and i'm going to select one of these points and let's move it a bit upwards maybe something like this right so let's click on bake again so it's going to be something like this inside grasshopper and let me close this and send everything one more time it is sent i'm going to switch back to blender and click on receive and voila as you can see the geometry is updated but the beautiful thing is the materials we set are preserved so we are definitely creating a connection between your rhino environment and your blender setup all right so this was it i hope you learned something new in this video if you have any questions just let us know in the comment section below or even better we have a community speckle.community ask there and we'll definitely help you thanks for watching and see you in the next one bye bye